Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing candy stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements to determine if it's a buy or a sell. Candy is a Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer. It also makes and sells EV batteries, EV parts, and electric scooters. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, market cap $1 billion. They're trading at $13.62 a share, and they have 72 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast a future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And this company has negative free cash flow in three of the four years positive 12 million in 2018. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and they have negative net income each year. Their sales are pretty steady. They're not really growing too much. 103 million up to 106 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Everything's in US dollar. Below that is the cost of revenue, the costs directly associated to generating the sales. And then their gross profit, and their operating expenses aren't too high, so their operating income is negative in a trailing 12 months, but it was positive in 2018 and 2019. So they do have negative net income every year. This is a breakdown of the company's revenue. 110 million from EV parts. That's the bulk of their revenue. They had a small amount from EV products. Also, they sell a decent amount of off-road vehicles, 22 million, and $2 million of electric scooters. And this is the statement of cash flows. And the company had negative operating cash flow in three of the four years. In 2018, they did have positive operating cash flow. And to calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. They have negative free cash flow in each year, except in 2018, it was positive 12 million. Although they are losing money most years, it's not a huge hole to fill. And you can see they didn't use any stock to finance their business. And every time they issued debt, it was pretty much to roll their debt. When I say roll their debt, I mean paying off previous debt. So in 2017, they issued $54 million and paid $64 million. In 2018, they issued $87 million and paid $92 million. 2019, they issued $35 million and paid $39 million. And in trailing 12 months, they issued $31 million and paid $62 million. So at least in the past four years, they haven't used much financing to run their business. They've been doing it with the money they had on their balance sheet. Let's look at a capital structure. $65 million of debt, $218 million of equity. And their net debt is $59 million. Net debt is total debt minus cash on balance sheet. Some investors like to look at net debt because they like to see if they have enough cash on their balance sheet to pay off their debt. In this case, they do not. They pay 7.4% interest on their debt and 23% of their capital structure's debt, which means 77% is equity. Cost of equity is 18.5%. To calculate cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model, and part of the CAPM formula is the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a pretty high beta, 2.1, so the stock moves more than two times the market. So if the market goes up 1% in a given time frame, this stock should go up more than 2%. And their WAC is 15.9%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 900 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $609 million. We divide that by 72 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 841. They're trading at 1362, so they're trading at a 62% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street doesn't have a value for this company. I am expecting the company to start generating positive free cash flow because it seems like the EV market is really blowing up. But I'm not sure how much this company will capitalize on it because there's so many big players in the game. I did grow their free cash flow at a decent rate, but it's still well below what they're trading at. Of course, anything can happen. The stock could go up to a thousand, it could go to zero. Nobody really knows. This is where the stock has been trading the past five years. So it looks like it was dropping for a few years and then it's really been driven up the past few weeks with the big EV craze. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $22,500 today. That's 125% return on investment. That's an 8.5% annual return. 
In 2019, the company expanded into the United States and got approval for two of its cars. The company shipped 50 to 100 EVs in mid-2019. This year, the company has opened a location in Texas and has been selling cars from there. A reason there are so many Chinese EV companies popping up is because of the air pollution in China is so terrible that the Chinese government is really pushing for electric cars. This is a picture of one of its cars which costs under $10,000 after incentives and rebates. And this article says, in terms of Chinese-based electric cars, Candy is leading the way to sell first in the United States. The US approved two of its electric cars, and the cost of the cars before incentives are $30,000 and $20,500. The reason the stock jumped the other day was due to a $2,500 tax rebate by the state of Texas. Only 2,000 people qualify for the tax rebate though. One of the company's wholly owned subsidiaries is China Battery Exchange Technology. This company IPO'd recently, but not in America, in the star market, that's a Shanghai stock market. And the company's total focus is battery swapping stations. If you're not familiar with it, a battery swapping station is where an EV car can go to replace its battery with a fully charged one. They're gonna be popping up more and more in the United States, but they're pretty popular in China. Candy has dozens of patents in the field of battery swap systems. And now with this subsidiary, they could finally monetize those patents. And with the addition of this company, Candy will improve its vertical integration of the electric vehicle market. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE is 13.8, the median is 14.5, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. The average price of sales is 6.0, the median is 2.2. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 9.3, so they're a little higher than the median and average. The average price to book is 4.6, the median is 2.4. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 4.5, so they're at the average. And equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And their tangible equity or tangible book value is 171 million. The reason we look at tangible net worth is because when you need money, it's much, much harder to sell intangible assets. It's a lot easier to get rid of tangible ones. So that's why we look at tangible book value. Average interest coverage ratio is 12, the median is four. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 0.4, so they cannot cover their interest payments with their EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. The average ROE is 10%, the median is 11%. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. The average current ratio is 1.9, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.5, so they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are five and a half million of cash, 135 million of receivables, 27 million of inventory, 10 million of prepaid assets, 11 million of restricted cash, and 5.7 million of other. So their free cash flow in the trailing 12 months was negative 30 million. So if they do the same thing next year, they have plenty of current assets on their balance sheet to cover that. Their working capital is 64 million. That's current assets minus current liabilities. You wanna have a decent amount of spread between those two, and that looks pretty good. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Apti, Borg Warner, Goodyear, LKQ, Linamar, and Magna, all in the same industry as Candy. And if Candy has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. Price of sales is worse. Price to book is worse. Their average and current ratio, negative ROE. They do have lower debt than the average. They're the smallest company of the bunch at 1 billion market cap, and they don't pay a dividend, similar to most companies. So to summarize, I do have them trading a 62% premium. I wouldn't be too surprised if in two and three years, this company had 20 or 30 billion market cap. My only concern is such a crowded market, so I'm not sure how well they're gonna capitalize on things. Their ratios and financials don't look so great, but they're still growing their business, trying to brand themselves and become a big player in this market. So that's why their numbers don't look so great. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.